I want you to see uh, Luke chapter 16. And um, before we go into the Luke's and to the scriptures, I want to see you. The Lord show me four keys. Uh, the people that are getting closer as they come in. Um, four keys how to um, revive, rekindle the passion for souls in our lives. How can we rekindle? Uh, how can we fire a passion for lives that don't know Jesus? Uh, there's some terms that people sometimes use. They call it unchurch. I wouldn't call it unchurch. I call them sinners. I call them people that don't know Christ. And um, I'm going to get into those three keys. Uh, at first, I taught one day and one of the Sundays on keep the eternal perspective. Number two, the reality of hell. Number three, the coming of Christ. And number four, the love of God. Those are the four keys for us to have passion for souls. Say it again, passion for souls. Okay, say it again. So now we understand. Let's go and see some statistics. What is the, um, um, populate, what's the population of the earth? And how many people really have been saved? And how many people are unsaved people? Um, so I want you to see, please, um, and see some, the world population right now. And the United States is 344 million people. The world population is one. 8.1 billion people global Christian population is 2.6 those are the people that include all denominations even Catholic they profess to be Christian so we don't know I can tell you they really born again believers I can say that so this is what was this statistic said and the, the is 2.6 billion and non-Christian population of the world is 5.5 billion. Do we have a lot of work to do? You don't sound so excited. You have a lot of work to do, right? So our church attendance in the United States is 23% weekly. Uh, population without access to the gospel, 27.8%, 2.2 billion. They don't have access to the gospel. 95% of the Christian have never won a soul for Christ. That should be, that's an indictment for believers, for the church, that they never won a person for Jesus Christ. Keep going. And 80% of all Christians do not consistently testify of Christ. Less than 2% are involved in the ministry of evangelism. Only 2%. And 45% of American adults now attend church regularly. And only 49 of the millenniums identify as Christians. Keep going. 71% do not give toward the finances of the Great Commission. The majority of the churches don't give toward the Great Commission, which is evangelize and win soul for Jesus. 60% of the leadership, including deacons, elders, have not led one stranger to Jesus. In the last two years, through the method of you go as an evangelism. Okay, keep going. 45% of the leadership and ministry spend zero time in an average week ministering outside the church. Okay, 89% of the leadership and ministries have zero time reserved in the list of weekly priority for going out to evangelize. In other words, that doesn't count. That doesn't... Um, the front thing. So, 90% uh, of the believer and the leadership uh, ministries, I, every Christian, including leaders, have ever commanded to preach the gospel, the lost the word. 90% of the believer, they live, and, and I came reading and reading, those are the statistics. In other words, that tells you how bad the church is regarding evangelism. But now, this church and you, we're going to be passionate and fire for Jesus. Come on, put your hand together. Now, let's go back. Understanding that, we're going to go and see uh, how, you know, how the, um, uh, I saw you the, the four keys, how to be passionate. And those four keys, I'm going to go into the second one. 
the reality of hell. Uh, this was very few amen. Because people think that when we talk about hell, is we want to scare people. That there's a lie. There's two lies from the enemy. These are the two lies. That Satan doesn't exist. This is the first lie. He, he makes people to believe that he doesn't exist. And number two, he also makes people to believe that hell doesn't exist. So those are two lies. And the world is blinded by it. So the world doesn't know, and they think, oh, hell is on earth. As a matter of fact, false preachers, this is the first thing that they came out of, the truth. And they went backslidden on that truth, denying the existence of hell. So I'm going to go, last one of the Sundays, uh, Prophet Glenda preached, but tonight she's going to continue. And myself, we're going to do a tag team. And we're going to do the... Because she had an experience with hell. Can you put your hand together for Prophet Glenda? <clears throat> so she uh, is one of the prophets of the house, and, and she is going to be sharing. She had an experience with hell, and this is the experience she had. She asked the Lord, Lord, please, I want love for the lost. Please give me love for the lost. And she went into a three-day fast. And being of those three-day fast, after the third day, an angel appeared to her. And the angel said, I came to, uh, and then the angel said, come with me, and took it to hell. And that was the place of, of torment, hell. And after the experience, she asked God, God, why you took me to hell? I was asking you, uh, that you for you to give me love for the lost. And the Lord said, you needed to know about hell before I give you love for souls you need to have the revelation of love isn't that true prophet she's going to be sharing as i preach i want her to interfere in certain things i'm going to give the teaching she's going to share some experiences in other words that's the confirmation uh the, the bible says by do two witnesses the word of god is established so the church won't have passion for souls, and I'm going to start the topic. The church won't have a passion for souls until we get the revelation of the reality of hell. Amen. When the church don't believe in the reality of hell, the church will not have compassion for souls. The early church had passion for souls, and they were constantly preaching the gospel. Even at their, uh, they put their, their life at risk. Because they understood the reality of hell. One of the foundation of the foundation of the, of the early church. This is what I call the doctrines of the apostle. The Bible says that the church uh, remained, persisted, persevered in the doctrine of the apostle. True apostle will teach this foundational truth. I wish I can hear an amen. Okay, so... Um, most Christians believe in hell uh, theologically, uh, doctrinally, uh, but they don't believe in the practice because they're not doing anything about it. Um, most of the leaders, uh, they went to apostasy. Uh, first thing that they started denying was the existence of hell. And as I mentioned, Prophet Glenda, how, the, how she asked love for souls, and the Lord ended up bringing her into hell to experience for her to have love for the lost. And one of the things she mentioned is, got the microphone ready. One of the things she mentioned was, uh, Prophet Glenda, can you, uh, when you went, you came out of your spirit and you went into hell, um, tell me, what, you said you went through a volcano. Yes. So explain. Yes, the angel took me down through the top of the, mouth of the mouth of a volcano. And it's in and that's why every time he told me every time a volcano erupts, hell is enlarging itself to hold the people. Okay, so I want you to see that what is in the scripture. 
The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, yes. verse 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, let's read it. One, two, three, go. Come on, read it. Help me, Angie. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth beyond measure and their glory and the multitude and their what? Bump and what? That the rejoice shall descend it into it. Did you see that? So that's what the, the confirmation. Every time you see a volcano uh, erupting, that is a sign that hell is expanding. Why? Because more people are going there. I wish I can hear an amen. amen. So when the revelation of hell, the Lord will give you the love and souls for compassion. So I, she saw many people in hell. She saw her own sister. She saw Elvis Presley there. She saw President Kenny there. She saw Judas. She saw the rich men. And Prophet, can you share those names that I name? And what, what, what was happening to them? Yes, when I went in. Luke chapter 16, verse when 19. The, when the angel took me down into hell, the first person I saw was Elvis Presley, and he looked just exactly like he did when he died. Same right, age, everything. Right. Mm, yeah, keep going. And he was uh, not singing. Anybody wasn't giving a request. He was singing Amazing Grace. And the angel told me, why do you marvel at this man? And I said, because I know him. I said, I mean, I know of him. And he said, and I said, they preached him right into heaven and said he is walking the streets of gold with the king. And he said, you know the truth now, and you must tell it, especially to the young people wherever they, you go. And I saw President Kennedy, and I was just marveled that he was there because I know he really believed he was going to make it in because of how the Catholics teach. And I saw Judas, and they were all in torment, and they were trying to get to repent, and they wanted to repent, and they were asking Jesus, please get us out of here. And the angel said, it's too late. They're all in one mind, in one accord in hell, but it's all what they leave to get out of there. And I saw uh, Hitler there. Hitler that killed, had many Jews killed. The uh, famous was there. My sister, I said, why? Did she have to come here? And the Lord said, I mean, the angel said to me, because she wanted to be with the rich and the famous. And now she got what she wanted. And I don't want to be with the rich and famous in hell. And when I was brought back, I said, this is one desire I have is to see you angel to come back and tell me nobody died and went to hell today. Prophet Glenda, uh, you asked, your sister spoke to you. Yes. What did she say to you? She asked me, please take care of my children and see that they don't come to this place. I know you have served the Lord and you have raised your children right. Please help my kids not to come here. And it was so sad, the people that are down there. Thank They're, you so much. Thank yes. you so much. Can you put your hand together? Um, let's read it. You're going to read it. Let's read it. I want you to lift your hands, please, before the Lord. Um, I want you to see the scriptures. It's my job as your apostle, as your pastor, to warn you, to teach you that you don't hear those false doctrines telling you that hell doesn't exist. That's what the devil does. 
I want you to hear me very carefully because after this message, your life in your family is on stake. So I want you to see it. Uh, let's read it. This is the story that Jesus narrated. And when Prophet Glenda went to hell, she saw the rich, that rich man that Jesus was talking about. Okay, let's read it. One, two, three, go. Help me, help me. <clears throat> read it right, louder, louder. Come on. And it was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23. Let's read it together. Go. And in hell being in torment. In where? In where? And in hell. And hell. Okay. Being in torment. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the lift of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Verse 25. Let's go. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things and likewise Lazarus, Lazarus evil, evil things. things. But, but now, now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Verse 26. And besides all this, between us you there is great gulf fixed so that they will pass. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 31. Read it together. One, two, three, go. And Abraham said to him, If they hear not Moses and prophets, neither will be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. In other words, how many people believe what Prophet Glenda experienced? I want to see your hands. Well, you are a supernatural church. You are being taught. And caught the supernatural. In other words, you understand that. But there's millions of people watching. I don't know how many connections. Uh, many people, thousands of people watching. And this is what Jesus, this is what the word says. They won't believe. Because the enemy, the enemy literally uh, blinded their eyes not to see. There's some questions about hell. Are you with me today? I lift your hands if you're with me. Stop sending messages, please. Respect my time. Okay, I prepare myself hours, days, fasting and praying to give you the best food. My job as a pastor is to feed you. So I don't want you to give me divided attention looking at your phone and looking at never and the presence of God is even worse we are in the presence of God so what is hell two who was hell created for three where is hell located at four why people go to hell why people don't believe in hell how can we be saved from hell those that are watching online, what is the biggest lie of the enemy? What is the place where people go without Christ? If there's life after death, the Bible says we are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So by your spirit leaves your body, and your body will die, go to the cemetery, and, and it's going to be rotten, and you die, but you're but your spirit will never die. Your spirit will live forever. There's two places. Hell, if you die with Christ, you go into heaven. 
your spirit. If you die without Christ, you're going to hell. So that is very important to understand. Can I hear an amen? Lord, let's go answer some questions. What is hell? Hell is a place of torment and judgment for people that die without Christ. In a very simple way to say it. The Bible also called hell other names like Sheol, Hades, Lake of Fire, and, and more names. There's more names of the Bible. Now, we understand the Bible calls hell other names. You already saw it. And uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 43 and four, through 48, you will see what hell is. A place of torment It's a place of judgment. Let's read it. One, two, three, four. And if that hand caused that to fall, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life. Main than having two hands go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Can I hear an amen on that? So it's clear that hell is a place of torment. Where is located at? Where is located at? Hell is located in the center of the earth beneath. In the center of the earth beneath. Um, the distance to the center of the earth is equivalent to 4,000 miles. That is approximately 6,000 kilometers. That's the center of the earth. Proverbs 15, 24. You will see the center of the earth. Uh, 11,000 degrees. Let's read it. One, two, three, go. The path of life is upward for the wise. But read it louder, please. Help me. One, two, three, go. It's over for the wise. And then he may depart from hell beneath. Where is hell located at? Beneath, on the center of the earth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. You will see it's 12,000 degrees temperature. Hot. And thus you saw 4,000 miles. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus was in that place. What Jesus went to do? He went to pay for your sins. What Jesus went to do? He went to uh, proclaim judgment against demonic spirit. That we're in prison. So those two things. So I want you to continue going. So I want you to see. Um, Jesus is the most. Is the authority. In this topic. Jesus. Uh, in this subject. If I can say it that way. At the end. The entire Bible. In other words. He taught his disciples. And his disciples. Uh, passed it on to early church. They knew about hell. They did everything possible to stop people from going there. And Jesus spoke three times more about hell than heaven. So because hell is a place where people will never leave. That is a place that you will never leave. The belief about hell came from Jesus himself. In other words, this is not something that... that I invented many people don't like to talk about hell because as you will scare people I'm not here to scare people I'm here to speak the truth can I hear an amen if I speak the truth if I teach about hell there's one purpose behind it for you me and neither of my family go to that place can I hear an amen on that what did Jesus teach on hell? What did he teach on hell? Let's, we're going to see certain things. I, I'm going to say something very important. <clears throat> Anybody that understands the reality of hell will testify about Jesus. For certain. I mean, that person will speak about Jesus. So we're going to go the greatest deception. You already saw it. Why people, there's no hell. 
and, and I want you to see some statistics because we tell you about hell. Some statistics about how many people die daily. I want to see in the year 2024, 166,000, almost 167,000 people died per day. Per day. Say it with me, per day. per day. Say it louder, please. <clears throat> uh, death per hour. Right now, 6,000. And the next hour, almost 7,000 people will die. In other words, number three, death per minute. 11,600 people die per minute. And death per second, two. Let's count. Two seconds. One, two, two people died. But this is the question. Where those thousands of people go when they died? Where did they go? When you go to a cemetery, you got family members. Where did they go? So when that reality come to us is to say, I have to speak to all my family members about Jesus. I wish I can hear an amen. amen. So there was, uh, there was uh, thousands of people. And you want to know something? The question is, did you know the majority of people, the majority of people are going to hell? The majority of the people going to hell, not going to heaven. Jesus said it. Jesus, he said it himself. He said the majority of people going to hell, not to heaven. Because he said wide. Matthew 7, verse 14. Wide is the door to destruction. Wide is the door to hell. Matthew 7, 14. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth into life. And few, few, few few read it please read it <clears throat> few there be that find it thousands of people go into hell every day and this is something we need to be uh, understand about it let me say something to you and I want you to write it down there's two things about a Christian a believer number one when a believer knows the reality, the truth about hell, they understand the reality of the truth about hell. And they don't share their faith. These are the most unloving, the most selfish people on the planet. Let's put that. No, no, let's put that what I just said. The truth about the hell. Somebody that if you don't share your faith with people, the truth, either you don't know the truth, but you from this moment forward, you don't have no excuse. That Christian doesn't believe the truth and the reality of hell. Or two, the Christian is the most unloving, selfish person on the face of the earth. So I don't want you to be one of those people believers come on put your hand together people things that the Bible talks about hell I want you to see what Jesus spoke on hell and what the Bible speaks on hell let's go we're gonna see number one hell is a place of out of darkness that's what Matthew 25 30 says hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 22, 13. I want you to see it. I want you to see Matthew 22, 13. And they said to the king, to the servants, bind him, hand and foot, and take him away. Cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's go back. So a place of of uh, 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 hell is a place of unending torture. Unending torture. 
Luke chapter, the story we just read, um, hell is a place of endless torment. Uh, I want you to see it. Don't, don't look at me. Look at the Bible. And hell is a place of endless torment. Luke chapter 16, verse 24. Um, <clears throat> if you go to Luke chapter 16. And then cry out and say, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because he said, I am tormented in this flame. And what about when somebody said, yeah, but how are you going to be tormented if you already die? Well, your body is here, but your spirit will be tormented. And really who you are, you are a spirit. Can I hear an amen on that? So it's a place where uh, um, Revelation chapter 1 verse, 20, verse 8 is a place of burning with fire and brimstone. And he said, um, no, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Remember, when I go with those verses, you need to go and read it. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Let's read it. Are you afraid of hell? How many of you are secure? Listen, how many of you are so sure and secure in your salvation in Christ? There's some pastor that didn't lift their hands. That they, can you repent now? How many of you, if you die right now, you know 100% you're going to heaven? Okay, how many of you not sure? Lift your hands. No, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah, there's some people that are they're not sure. That's what we're going to give the call for the lost. Let's go. Hell is a place, but this is something that um, is a place where warm never dies. That's what Mark chapter 9 verse 44, the Bible says that warm never died. Um, in other words, uh, okay, hell is a place of fire never quenches. Mark chapter 9 verse 44, 45, uh, if you have it, please. So... Hell is a place of not rest. Where the what? One, two, three, go. Okay. Okay, keep going. Verse, verse. Um, no, we already read it. It's a place of not rest. Um, Revelation chapter 14, verse 11. There's no rest. There's continual a torment day and night. Okay, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 14, verse 11, is that what I said? Okay, and the smoke of the torment ascended up ever and ever. And they have not rest day or night, who worship the beast of his image, and whoever received the marks of his name. And this is the question many people ask. So hell is a place of memory. How many of you know that when you die and you go into heaven, you will remember everything? Lift your hand. Of course. Because you keep being you. Because your spirit never die. Your spirit will remember everything. So in hell, people will remember. So it's a place of... Uh, it's a place to remember. Luke chapter 16, verse 25. When people die here in their physical body, but they remember everything. 16, verse 25. Verse 26. Remember. So he said, remember. He remember he had five brothers. He remember. Prophet Glenda, a sister, remember that she had uh, sons and daughters. Said, please go to speak to my children. So she remembered because hell people remember that. In hell, and what they will remember, listen very carefully. They will, the person that will eternally remember that they regret Jesus Christ. They regret to receive Jesus Christ. 
just that torment is enough. They will remember they have an opportunity. They will remember they too busy working in the church. They were too busy serving. They were too busy. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? They were too busy. They will remember, my God, why I did not have time to serve Jesus, to help Jesus, to receive Jesus. So that was what the biggest regret. So that's what we need to understand. Can I hear an amen on that? Hell is a place where a person can never leave. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. And lastly, hell is a place of full of pain, destruction, and never satisfied. We have to obey the Great Commission, never satisfied. Hell is not on earth. Because this is what many preachers, the false preachers, speaks and preach about. They said, oh, hell is on earth. No, it's not. There's a place of torment. There's a place of that, that people will never leave. Can I hear an amen on that? So we understand. Now, if there's life after death, thank you. If there's life after death, yes, there's life after death. Hebrews 9.27. Man is a spirit, have a soul, and live in a body. And when your body dies, your spirit continually to exist and to live forever. The difference is, will you spend it in hell or will you spend it with Jesus? So Hebrews, and it is appointed to, unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Every man, every human being has an appointment with death. Touch your neighbor and tell him, you have an appointment with death. No, you don't sound like you want to cancel it. You want to postpone it. You can't postpone it. You can't cancel it. You can't, you can't, you, you can't. You, everyone in this room and people watching, everyone, everyone, you cannot cancel that appointment. You cannot postpone it. You're going to have an appointment with death. See, you don't want it. You say, I, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and say, touch your neighbor and tell him, you have an appointment with death. So, Prophet Glenda, is what I describe, okay, what I describe, or what the Bible describes, what Jesus taught. Can you tell me about what hell is, the torments in hell? There's anything that you saw that you want to tell the people. By the way, those watching, there's a lot of 24,000 connections. There's people watching and over here. Prophet Glenda is a senior and experienced prophet. This is not somebody that, that ate pizza last night and she went to hell. She is very... Can you put your hand together? She, it, it, we need to honor her. If you, if you are a spiritual person, you will know what kind of woman she is in the spirit. If you don't walk in the spirit, you will attack, you will criticize. But if you walk in the spirit, you know what kind of, of prophet we have in the house. Okay, Prophet Glenda, what I just said about hell and the Bible spoke about, what, what else do you want to say that you saw or you experienced? One thing I noticed as soon as uh, the angel took me there, the, there was no presence of God, none at all. And it was so dark. And the lava that comes down through the volcano was burning people and torturing. And the screams are so bad, you can't take it. You can't uh, even... Hollywood can't even make a sound that would sound like that. The moaning, the groaning, and another thing, the smell is so bad. Rotten flesh. If you have cancer here and you went without Christ and you went to hell, you'll have cancer all through eternity and it all stinks so bad. And Whatever people, uh, alcoholics down there, they have an uh, 
want more and more and more the temptation, but they can't have anything to drink. Prophet, you also saw preachers. Yes, I did. Tell me why those preachers were in hell. They were with their congregation and they were preaching the truth. And uh, I asked the angel, why are they here? And he said, because of pride and greed. They were so prideful and they uh, preached lies to the congregation and the congregation is here because they love to have it told that way. They didn't want conviction and they just wanted money and power and fame, a name. And uh, uh, that really made me cry in hell to see preachers there preaching. And he said, whatever you're called to do here on earth, you're going to do it down there if you don't make heaven. You'll do it through ever, uh, eternity forever and ever and ever, and it will never stop. Wow. Thank you, prophet. Can you put your hand together, people? So the, the, the question that I have for you is this. I'm finishing. Uh, where are those people that they, uh, you see in the cemeteries? Uh, where are those uh, family members? How many of you have family members that don't know Jesus? Lift your hand. What are we going to do about it? Uh, if, if the revelation of hell is real, you're going to have to go back even today to talk to them about Jesus. And to bring him next Sunday to be saved. Can you put your hand together? A uh, hell is not a fiction. The hell is reality. A uh, hell. Uh, there's two places when man dies to go. That he goes heaven or hell. If you die with Christ, you go into heaven. If you die with, uh, without Christ, you go into hell. So there's no way in the middle. And according to the Bible... Uh, there's, there's a lot of things happening. God doesn't want people to go to that place. So there's a question somebody asked me, and this is one of the teaching. Um, uh, somebody said to me, how a, a loving God will send people to hell? That's what the, 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 the argument. How a loving God will send people to hell? I said, God doesn't send people to hell. God doesn't send people to heaven. You choose heaven. You choose hell. Can you put your hand together? <clears throat> so why people go to hell? For two reasons. Because number one, because they reject Christ. What do you mean reject Christ? John 3.36 Christ went to hell to pay for your sins and my sins. So he went to hell to pay for that price because that judgment and, and chastisement was for you and for me. So he went to hell to pay for it. So when you say, I don't want Christ, nobody's going to pay the price for you. So you're going to have to go pay yourself. So he that believeth in the Son has everlasting life and he that believeth not in the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abide on him I feel the presence of God lift your hands to the Lord let's worship hallelujah why people go to hell they reject the son of God why people go to jail a prison or to hell as a penalty of their sin hell was created for the devil and his demons hell was never created for men hell was created Matthew 25 41 this is very important to answer those question to those people that says 
Oh, how a loving God will reject with some people to hell. No, we choose by rejecting Jesus, but not receiving forgiveness of our sin, by not repenting of our sin. By doing that, we saying, I will pay on hell for my sin that Jesus already paid, but he respect your will. He respect your will. And then he shall say unto them, be ye cursed into the everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. The devil was created for the, his angels, for, the, for, for the, the devil. But people, why people go there? They will receive the same punishment. They will receive because of their sin. But I don't have to prove, I don't have to go to hell to prove that there's a hell. There's an opportunity. Jesus died for our sins. And the best news of the gospel is that you don't have to go there eternally. But if you repent of your sin, you will be saved. Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you so much for watching today's message. If you're watching today, and you have not made the decision to accept Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud and say with me after me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, thank you so much. If this video has been a blessing to your life, please share it with your friend and subscribe to our channel so don't miss out any other video or live broadcast. Thank you so much. We love you, bless you. See you next time.